it was a long time ago, and though I think about it every now and then, I'm sure I've forgotten some of the details, and I'm sure I've, I've changed some of them, but for the most part, I think I can put it down pretty good. Must have been about 1977 or 78. So, over 30 years ago. Probably Charlie's idea. Let's take Ride the Horses to Richwood. Well, it sounded like a great idea. So, we got ready. Pack some coffee, tobacco, some doobies, sleeping bag, underwear, slicker. I don't think we took any whiskey. Didn't take any wine. Maybe a towel. Maybe a flashlight, some matches. Uh, I had a wonderful 18th century brass pot with a long iron handle, which was great. You could stick it in the fire, and you'd have boiling water in about 90 seconds. I took something called bear mush, which is a little bit like cream of wheat. And then we packed up for the trip. Uh, I guess I was riding Billy Joe, quarter horse, McClellan's saddle, saddle. And Charlie was wearing, riding Billy Casper, a little bit bigger horse. And I guess he was riding the western and... I guess we set off pretty early, uh, up over past Dick and Susan, down to Bog Run, up past the McMillian place, up to the KC Highway, and took that down to Coal Knob. Must have been the summertime, I can't really remember, and I can't really remember too much about that part of the ride, except that any time you're riding the horse up in the mountains, it's really wonderful, and plus we were going pretty slow, and we didn't really have any maps. Never took the ride before, but we knew if we just got to the North Fork of the Cherry, we'd get our ways to Richwood. Well, eventually we got to Cold Knob, came on some place called Lost Flats. We found some couple of strange people living in some trailers, and I can't remember too much anymore, except they didn't seem like country people. They sort of seemed like something out of uh, the Twilight Zone. I guess we stopped, we had a cup of coffee and worked our way across the knob and worked our way down till we hit the cherry. And of course they got interested in riding the horses downhill and you sort of zig and zag and zig and zag and sometimes the riding was pretty good and other times it was pretty rough, but eventually we got down to the river. Couldn't ride pretty much, we were in the ride in the river a little bit, but there'd be trails along the river you could ride. and We'd be riding along a trail and it seemed like it was really good. The next thing you'd know would be like a dead end in trees. It's an old logging trail that stopped, so we hit our miss, hits and misses and eventually we made it into Richwood, the next thing you know, you know, you're in the woods, the next thing you know, you're in town, and we come on a house and asked if we could tie the horses up in the yard, and the woman was very nice about it. So we tied the horses down, took the saddles off, and didn't take long to walk into town, and went into the beer joint pool room hamburger place. Now here we were, I guess we had on, on boots, and jeans and plaid shirts and I guess we looked like everybody else but those people in Richwood they could tell right away that we weren't from there but you know we got a couple of remarks and some looks but we never really had much trouble so we had something to eat went into the state store got a pint of whiskey and there was an SDS or Soil Conservation Service or some state agency there so I went in and I bought one of those topo maps for the area where we were riding because I thought it might help us getting back home, not get lost. 
there might be some some roads or some trails that would help us. So I bought one of those maps and we went back, got the horses and didn't go too far in and, and, and camped for the night. I don't remember much about it, but I'm sure it was pretty wonderful camping up in the stars. We did bring some grain for the horses and some long leads. Well, it started to rain in the night and we had slickers and it just poured and we were in this down this bottom in this rhododendron and it was raining and it was raining and it was raining and we said well you know if we could start a fire and get dry and, and get on the horses we could get going so we made an attempt to get some kindling and, and start a fire but we didn't have much success and then I had a good idea I said Charlie let's try again pay real diligence, get the best kindling we have and get everything we could have and get ready. And I took out that map that I bought up there from that state office and I ripped it up into a lot of little pieces and used that with the kindling and it worked. And we managed to get a fire, a pretty good fire going and uh, got pretty warm and got pretty dry and got on our horses and worked our way back beautiful ride. Eventually it stopped raining. Coming back, we worked our way up the side of some mountain. It was like the Grand Canyon, really. These uh, trails, let's see, one, two, three. Oh, maybe they were four foot wide. Switch back, switch back, switch back. All of a sudden we came out on a lunar landscape. We were one, one of these big strip mines that they said was in Pocahontas County. I'm pretty sure it was in Greenbrier, but it was hard to tell. You know, with these big vehicles, with these tires, 10, 12 foot high. And Anyway, we got there and eventually we came out on the Briary Yard Road. Worked our way down. Finally came up there on La Bia. Worked our way back and, and got back to Jay Cox. And it was a wonderful ride. You know, we cooked bear mush and we made coffee. We fired up some doobies. We didn't see too many deer or bear. You know, I remember washing in the river. and It was just really exciting. And uh, that was our ride to Richwood, me and Charlie.